How do we play the imagination game to allow in more of what we truly desire, no matter what's going on in our world? We're going to talk about that today on Awakening with Amy. Hi, welcome. I'm Amy Valentine, Certified Life Coach, hoping to awaken within you a mindset that you can be, do, and have any desire. And today we're going to talk about the power of our imagination. So many teachers talk about the power of our imagination, but you know what I want to start with? The key is understanding that we're doing it all day, every day, anyway. No matter what's going on out there, no matter what's going on within ourselves, we are imagining machines. We are talking to ourselves, focusing constantly, always, every day, all day, every day. And the key is to understand it's a game. Florence Scoville Shen has so many really good books. I have the compilation. There's four books in this one, but in her book called The Game of Life and How to Play It, that's actually what this video is really inspired from is, is, is that book. This is how she starts her book. And this is how I wanted to st- start this video today. The chapter is called The Game. Most people consider life a battle but it is not a battle. It is a game. Jesus Christ taught that it was a great game of giving and receiving. Whatever you give out, you get back. I know it sounds so basic, but it's so powerful. All the ancient teachers, the spiritual teachers, everybody says the same thing in a different package. As within, so without. What we're imagining is either imbued with love or it's imbued with fear. And this is not about judgment. This is about learning to become awake in the game so you can create a happy ending now while you're in a physical body. And like Abraham Hicks always says, they say, you never get it done. You can't get it wrong. You never get it done. It's always a happy ending. It's happy no matter what is going on in your physical life experience right now, because when you cross over into that non-physical realm and, you know, you shed this body, it's a happy ending. So why not create that now? I have a friend, a really good friend of mine. She used to own a Greek deli and one of her customers had a really horrible accident and had a near death experience and told her this story. And it's so powerful. This is what she said. So the woman flatlined, I think for like five minutes. And when she was on the other side, she saw her dead brother. And the first thing her brother said to her was, wasn't that earth thing such a hoot? Really think about that. Wasn't that earth thing such a hoot? It's a game. We're in a simulation. That's what me and my friend Jesse always say. We're in a simulation. It's like the matrix, you know, we don't realize that we have all the control. But that's the point of the game is to wake up to that fact that your imagination is first cause, your consciousness, what you're allowing yourself to focus on is creating your physical reality, right? So how do we understand this this game of imagination? Well, it's a kind of like what Florence said. Instead of thinking it's a battle, think of it as a game, a game of giving and receiving. I'm going to give myself love then no matter what, because this is the key. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. It doesn't matter where, where you've been. If you're, you know, you made decisions that you're not happy about. The universe only responds to us now. It's only responding to your now mix of thoughts and vibration. So the key is to not resist any of it. 
The key is to understand how to play the game, that every negative emotion we have is simply guidance. It's, it's important information letting us know how we're using our imagination. And if your imagining is imbued with fear, you're creating unwanted, your focus on unwanted scenarios and conditions. And when your thoughts and imagination are imbued with love, now you're focused on your desire. Now you're allowing what you want in. So often we put high importance on things, not understanding this game. You don't have to put high importance on anything because when we're putting, when we're putting anything on a pedestal, whether it's a person, a relationship, money, job, whatever, you're saying that there's some other outer force that is, has the control over you. And you wouldn't do that to yourself knowingly. So it's about getting out of the stories in your head and getting out of the drama and the trauma in your outer world by not resisting it, by letting it inform you what you want more of and what you want less of. You don't have to fix anything. There's nothing to overcome. We're here. Again, remind yourself it's a game and it's always a happy ending. So I'm going to end up having my death experience, going back into pure positive energy. It's a happy ending. So why not create that for myself now? So how do we do it? Number one, we have to let go. (laughs) How annoying is that, right? No, letting go, meaning we're not letting go of what we want. We're not letting go of desires. We're not letting go of experiencing life, physical life. No, we're letting go of anything that feels unlike love. We're not fighting it. Letting go means the power of surrender. Understanding that I'm not my thoughts. I'm not my feelings. They're just guides. And when I'm feeling any negative emotion, it means I'm pondering something that is, is not serving me, right? You're just forgetting. It's, and it's okay. That's what Paul said. I die daily. I die daily. Well, we're d- dying to the, the thoughts, the feelings, the stories that are fearful. Remember, our imagination is our power. We don't have to force a picture. We don't have to specifically imagine anything. So we want to let go, right? It's about that allowing state, allowing. Remember, giving and receiving. What I'm giving out, I'm getting back. Always, always, always. And So you want to let go of anything that feels unlike love. Number two, be really, really mindful of attachments. Attachment to any specific outcome is you imagining unfulfillment, non-fulfillment, imagining fear. And non-fulfillment is is ridiculous when you know who you really are, right? Right? So we want to look at our attachments. Attachments is when we're clinging to a specific outcome. It has to be this person. It has to be this situation. That is not love. That's not owning your power, right? That's imagining loss. And I get it. I mean, we've all had loss in our life, but it's not about not experiencing any pain or loss. It's about rising above it and understanding that that is an illusion. Fear is the illusion. And the reality, ultimate reality, again, it's a happy ending, is only love, right? So we get into that state of non-attachment, non-resistance with gratitude. Gratitude is the elixir for everything. Why? Because gratitude, the essence of gratitude implies abundance. You're thanking your father in advance. You're thanking your higher self. And thank you, Father, that you have heard me. I knew you always hear me. That was Neville's one of Neville's favorite lines in scripture. 
Thank you, Father. Why? Because it says, I and the Father are one. I think it's in John something. But the Father is greater than I. What does that mean? The Father is greater. The Father is giving you everything. It's only saying yes. The universe is only saying yes to you. And it's reading what you're putting your imagination on as what you want more of. It doesn't understand evil. It doesn't understand fear. It's just pure positive love. It can't comprehend it. God never creates anything evil, right? We, we do that with our lack, our, our belief in lack, lacking love. So, Paul, I die daily, right? We want to let go, die to the old state and expand and allow our good by playing the game. Look, we take ourselves everywhere we go anyway. The game of life is really a game of solitaire and any character or situation and circumstance that's in your personal movie is your creation because it's what you're doing in your imagination, the stories you're focused on, what you're telling yourself to be true in any moment is what's becoming a life experience, a tangible reality. So the game of life, Florence says, basically is a a game of boomerangs, right? What we send out comes back to us with astonishing accuracy, she says in one of the chapters, a game of boomerangs. So let go of whatever's going on that's creating any drama and understand any negative emotion is just guidance. It's time for me to pause, to let go of anything that doesn't feel like love and have faith, faith in the unseen reality. It's your inner eyes I would open. That's Seth from Jane Roberts. It's an inside job. We change the stories we focus on within, knowing we have the creative power with the help of our higher self, the universe, right? And then we detach. We let go of those attachments. We don't need to attach to anything because attachment implies fear and non-fulfillment. And remember, it's always a happy ending. So why not allow yourself to receive it now? So your power is in your imagination, is waking up in the dream, literally becoming aware of life is a game, a game of giving and receiving. When I give myself love, I allow more love in. And that's what I receive. So define everything in your life, even if it's an unwanted situation from the higher perspective and ask yourself, if you don't want any more of it, you don't have to fight it and resist it. Fear not little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Open up to that. It's a game. It's a light touch. And that is the attitude that brings everything you want. And you imbue that game, your day-to-day, you remind yourself every day to be thankful and grateful for everything that you have, then more must be given for you to be thankful and grateful for. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Thank you for liking and sharing the video. Thank you for being open to these teachings. And thank you for subscribing.